Hi, I'm Amy Romeo of Amy Romeo Crafts, and in this video, I'll be showing you how to make these peace, love, and joy ornament earrings using faux leather heat transfer vinyl and a Cricut. So let's go ahead and dive in and get started. The SVG file for this project is available in my shop. It's part of my holiday faux leather crafting event where I'm sharing a brand new holiday SVG and video tutorial every day for 20 days. I'll leave a link on the screen for you so you can get the SVG or you can visit amyromeo.com holiday to see all of the event's designs. Let's go over the tools and materials we'll be using to make this project. I'll be using the Cricut Maker today, but you can use any of the current Cricut machines because we'll be cutting the faux leather with the standard fine point blade that is included on all of those machines. So this project will be made up of faux leather as the base and then some heat transfer vinyl on top. And the faux leather that I'm using is a kind of micro print plaid, like a buffalo plaid, and I'll link to all of my materials for you. If you like this print, you'll wanna make sure that you're getting this one because generally faux leather plaids have a lot bigger check. And I think this tiny plaid works really well for this project. Of course, you could use any other print you'd like or a solid faux leather. It's absolutely your choice. And then for the heat transfer vinyls we'll be using, I'll be using some just regular white heat transfer vinyl and also a glitter in gold. You can use the colors of your choice. And then I'll be showing you how to put some foil iron on on the back of the faux leather before we cut to help make the back of the earrings look finished and professional and also to add some structure to the earrings. I'll be cutting the faux leather using the purple strong grip cutting mat and the vinyl using the green standard grip cutting mat. If you're using either of the Cricut Joy machines, you can cut the faux leather with just the regular green mat that those machines come with. To press the heat transfer vinyl onto the faux leather, I'll be using my Cricut Easy Press Mini on the low setting. You could also use a regular Easy Press, but these are little tiny shapes, so it's better if you have something small and handheld to use when you're pressing the heat transfer vinyl onto very small earring shapes. I'll also have a heat pressing pad and then a cover sheet. This is a Teflon sheet that I've cut down to size. You could also use butcher paper or parchment paper. Some other tools we'll need are some weeding tools. You could use a hook tool or a pin pen style, whatever you prefer. I have some flat nose jewelry making pliers to put on the earring hooks. I have some blue painter's tape. This will help us tape the faux leather down to the mat to get a nice cut. I have a 1 16th inch hole punch, which is the perfect size to punch earring holes in faux leather if the Cricut doesn't cut the hole all the way through. And then I have some small detailed scissors. These are great for trimming up the edges of faux leather as needed. And then we'll just be using some six millimeter jump rings and some regular earring hooks to finish off the earrings. So let's hop into design space and we'll get our shapes ready to cut. So starting with a blank canvas in Cricut Design Space, we'll click on upload and then upload image and you'll browse to where the unzipped SVG file is for this project. Click open and you'll see a preview of the ornament designs, which I'll talk about in just a moment. Click upload and then they will all appear here in the recent uploads row. Click add to canvas. And now you'll see all of the earring designs are on your canvas. Let me just zoom in a bit for you here. So here you can see we have three different earring designs. One has no pre-cut earring holes and one has pre-cut earring holes. So for earring making, I always prefer to use the pre-cut hole version because it just helps me with knowing where my hole is supposed to go. Even if the Cricut doesn't cut it, we can use that hole punch that I showed you a moment ago. But if you wanted to change the size of this design, which would change the size of the earring hole considerably, then you'll want to use the without holes version. You can also use the without holes version if you wanted to use this design somewhere else, like to make stickers with it or put on tumblers or shirts. So since I know I'm going to be making earrings, I want to use the with holes version. So I'm going to ungroup all of my shapes so I can delete the version I won't be using. So here we're left with our three earring designs. We have love, we have peace, and we have joy, all made the same way. So the bottom color will cut from faux leather, the faux leather of your choice, printed, solid, whatever. Then there's a white outline that will cut from white heat transfer vinyl. And then we have the gold letters and we also have the gold ornament cap 
that I'm going to cut from glitter heat transfer vinyl. So in this demonstration, I'll be cutting one of these designs, but just know that all of them will cut the exact same way. So I'm going to delete the shapes that I'm not going to cut off of my canvas. So I've just selected those two earrings and I'll click the delete button on my keyboard and the same here. So now I can click the make it button. I'm cutting my shapes on a mat. And here we will see in, in the mat preview screen how Cricut is gonna lay out our different shapes on each different mat. So the first thing we want to do is go through and click on mirror for each mat. And that's because faux leather and heat transfer vinyl cut in reverse. Now, once I've mirrored each mat, what I wanna do is just drag my shapes apart from each other just a little bit. This is gonna help when I'm weeding out my, my designs from the vinyl. Okay, great, so I've done that. Now I'm going to click back on the faux leather mat because I always like to cut that one first and I'll click continue. And I'll use the faux leather paper thin setting with more pressure to cut the faux leather sheets. If you don't have this setting bookmarked as a favorite like I do, you can click on browse all materials and search for it. If you're using the Explore Air 2, you'll need to turn your dial to custom before you can search for and find this setting. For the two vinyl mats, you will just use the material setting that corresponds with the vinyl that you've chosen and the manufacturer's recommended cut settings. So for this white mat, I'm going to use the vinyl setting with default pressure. For my glitter mat, I'm going to use the glitter vinyl setting with default pressure. And I will repeat the cut one time because this is Caesar heat transfer vinyl glitter, which is a little thicker and cuts better with two cuts in my opinion. So let's go ahead and hop back over to my overhead camera. We'll get our backing put on our faux leather. We'll cut out our shapes and then I'll show you how to press the earrings together. Okay, so I've already trimmed out a piece of faux leather from the larger sheet that is a size just large enough to cut out the two earring shapes. It's always best to cut your faux leather smaller when you place it on the mat because we will be taping it down and taping down a smaller piece is gonna help it adhere better to your mat and it will help you get better cuts. So here's that smaller piece of faux leather and then I also cut a piece of foil iron-on. This is in the color light gold. This is Cricut brand and I'm going to place these two pieces back to back. It's important that your foil iron-on piece is just slightly smaller than your faux leather. You don't wanna accidentally press the foil onto your pressing pad if it overlaps. So I have both these ready to go. I'm just gonna place them here on my heat pressing pad. I have my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting, which is that first green bar. And I'm just going to cover with my cover sheet and press all over. I need to touch every piece of the back of this faux leather for about 10 seconds each. So now what I wanna do is peel back the clear carrier sheet that protects the foil iron-on. And I want to do that with keeping my faux leather as flat as possible. And that's gonna keep wrinkles out of my foil iron-on. So I'm just peeling away very carefully if when you're peeling your foil iron on lifts or bubbles, that means it's not adhered all the way and you'll wanna press that cover sheet right back down, cover again and press for another few seconds and try again. So that looks pretty good. And what we want to see is the texture of the faux leather coming through the foil iron on just a little bit. And this is because when we cut, the blade of the Cricut will be going through here, and if that foil iron-on is not well adhered to the back of the faux leather, the blade will tear the foil iron-on or the heat transfer vinyl, whatever you have on the back, and we don't want that. So now that that clear cover sheet is removed, I'm going to cover and press again for about five seconds all over just to make sure that that foil iron-on is very well adhered to the back of the faux leather. Now this is a completely optional step. You don't need to put it back on your faux leather, but it is a very common question that I get about putting something on the back and it does make the back of the earrings look more finished and it also makes the faux leather a little stiffer, less floppy and less likely to bend. So this is what that looks like on the back and you can see that texture of the faux leather peeking through a little bit. So this is warm and I wanna let it cool flat so I'm just gonna get my purple mat ready to go and I'll place this piece of faux leather with the pretty side of the faux leather down on that purple strong grip cutting mat. 
pressed on really well with your fingers. And then we're gonna use that blue painter's tape just to tape down the material on all sides. Now I'm reusing some blue painter's tape that I've used before. You can use these pieces four or five times, which is great. There we go. And we have our faux leather paper thin setting already set with more pressure. So we'll just load the mat into the Cricut and begin the cut. So once the cut is complete, we don't wanna unload the mat yet. We want to use something like our sharp weeding tool and just get in at the edge of the cut and see if the cut went all the way through. I know it's a little hard to see, but this one does look like it went all the way through. The faux leather is lifting up nicely and it, nothing is pulling it down, little strings, nothing is making it catch and stick to the faux leather mat. So I can unload the mat at this point, but if you need to repeat your cut, you can absolutely do that as many times as necessary. Just by pressing that cut button again, it will rerun the cut. And you can do that as many times as you'd like, as long as you haven't unloaded your mat. Now the option to rerun the cut on the Cricut Joy will be on your screen in Design Space. So these shapes look good and you can see where the Cricut cut the hole. And even if the Cricut did not cut the hole all the way through, at least we have a marker to know where to punch with that hole punch. But I'm just using my sharp weeding tool. I like to kind of see how the hole did and that one did pretty good. And we'll remove this one. And again, we'll just try and poke that hole through. And I'll probably end up using the hole punch just to make that hole again. Okay, so now we're gonna go ahead and cut out our vinyl mats. I'll weed out the excess vinyl and then I'll show you how we press the vinyl layers onto the faux leather. Okay, so we've got our vinyl layers weeded out. I'm just gonna finish cutting this other one apart from each other. There we go. And before we start pressing, I did wanna show you how to use the 1 16th inch hole punch. So I always like it, as I said, I let the Cricut make the hole and even if the hole doesn't go all the way through, I know where to punch because now I have that little hole mark. So all I'm gonna do you can see where sort of the pointy part of the punch is. I just line that up with the mark that was made on the faux leather with the Cricut and punch. And this punch is so well and it makes the perfect size earring hole. I don't know if you can see that. And this will punch through two layers of faux leather at the same time if you want it to. They're great. These are less than $10 on Amazon and I'll link to them for you and they last forever. So there we go, now we have our two holes nicely made. I have my Easy Press Mini set to the low setting again, and all we're going to do is first center the little white outline for the word piece. And you can look at your screen and design space to sort of remind yourself, but basically we're just centering it left and right and top and bottom. This is gonna create the outline that will make our words more visible on the background of the faux leather print. And now we'll just press again for about 10 seconds. Now we'll just peel away that little cover sheet. And now what I'm going to do is place my second layer. What I wanna do is line it up so that the little ornament top, this top part, and the little circle match up with the circle I punched and the word piece is inside of the sort of outline of the white heat transfer vinyl. There we go, that looks good. And again, I'll press for 10 seconds. Always peel back the cover sheet of your vinyl slowly. So if you need to, you can place it down and press again. But that's it, isn't that cute? So I'm gonna place this one to cool underneath my pressing pad so the faux leather cools 
in a nice flat position and I'm going to continue the same process for the other earring. So now that I have the second earring pressed, again, I'll let this cool flat while I prepare the earring hooks to attach to the faux leather shapes. So this is how the regular shepherd earring hooks come. They have the earring loop here sort of in parallel with the hook. And what we want to do is turn it 90 degrees. So when we use a jump ring to attach our earring shapes, the earrings will hang straight on our ears. So let me show you how I do that. I just use one pair of flat nose jewelry making pliers. These are flat on the inside, so there are no teeth to damage the metal. Nice and flat and wide at the end. And I'm going to hold the earring hook firmly between my thumb and my forefinger just to protect that hook. And then with my flat pliers, I'm gonna grip the bottom loop and just turn. And that's gonna turn our earring hook, the loop there, 90 degrees, which is exactly what we want. So I'll do that on the other side. So now we have both of our earring hooks, the bottom loops turned in the right direction. We're ready to attach our earrings. So our earrings have cooled nice and flat. And I'm going to use two pliers to open up my little jump ring. This is a six millimeter size jump ring. And I have the top of the opening of the jump ring facing up, like at the 12 o'clock position. And then I have one pair of pliers on the left hand side at the nine o'clock position. And I'm going to use a second pair of pliers at the three o'clock position and just twist one of my wrists open to open up that jump ring. I'm holding on to it with the pliers. This is something, if you're not used to it, it will take some practice, but opening jump rings is a very important jewelry making skill that just takes practice and time. So I've attached my little earring piece there and now I'm going to attach the earring hook and I'll just close that jump ring back up again. And there we go. So our piece earrings are complete. And here's a look at what all three earring ornaments look like together. I hope you like this project. If you want to see the rest of the faux leather crafts I've made for this holiday craft event, I'll leave a link to a playlist for you. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video.